name is Marco Troisi and I'm a senior software engineer for Bluefin Payment Systems. Bluefin is both in um, a payment gateway and an encryption as a service solution. What that means is that uh, you as a merchant can adopt Bluefin uh, for the entirety of your payments, so as a pay proper payment gateway or uh, you the merchant or uh, another payment gateway can use Bluefin just for encryption and we are a proper PCI compliant encryption uh, one of uh, the first and for the moment one of the probably two or three or four only encryption as a service companies in the world people would have different opinions uh, or different perspectives of what microservices are but the way I define it is that microservices are a way of building your software in uh, small isolated components that can uh, can and probably should live on different servers and uh, can run on different languages different platforms can be easily uh, in a relatively short amount of time be rewritten and can be handled by different teams everyone focused on a different business logic from a general point of view, uh, the reason why the industry has been uh, talking and thinking about microservices and doing micro microservices now for a while is that because it does solve a number of problems. Um, and, so, and that has been this in my experience in uh, Bluefin and the other companies that I've worked in for in the past. Uh, microservices, this approach of keeping things very small, isolated, um, is really really helpful. I have a number of uh, I would say conditions um, that I use to see if in my opinion we should move towards microservices or not for the given platform that I'm working on and as, at a, a certain point in time. Um, uh, uh, definitely the scale of the organization does matter so if it's a really small company that you're working for if it's like two or three people don't do microservices. That's, in my opinion, it's not a good idea. Um, if the scale of the application isn't that big yet, no matter how positive you are about the future, and you obviously want to become the next Facebook or the next Amazon, but if for the moment you're not that big yet, don't rather don't do microservices. Build in a way that later on the thing can be split into microservices, but don't do it for the moment. The benefits that you get from microservices would be obviously the idea that you can um, have different teams. So this is, would be from a productivity and project management point of view. You can have different teams focusing on different microservices and handling only that. Uh, so you have more focused team, small teams that can uh, think about one thing and one only and do it really well. Uh, then from a technology point of view, what you can do is that you can actually choose the right tool for the job, the right, um, you know, this, so this particular thing can be probably solved better in Java, but this other thing can be easily written in Ruby or in PHP. And so having everything separate gives you the, the ability to say, okay, are we going for the dynamic? Are we going to the uh, static? Are we going to the, what are we doing here? Do we prefer performance? Do we prefer uh, something else? So you can, you have that freedom, you're not tied up to a single technology and the whole monolith, the whole thing needs to be done with that technology. So that, in my opinion, is something that needs to be enforced at a software architecture level. So what I would suggest is that if as a company you're doing microservices, I would say don't even consider it if you don't have a software, at least one software architect that will be in charge of making sure that the quality is you know, consistent and high and that nobody thinks that because their microservice is micro, small, so they don't need to put a lot of attention to the details. I think that there are already some uh, decent solutions that will make your life easier as when it comes to deploying your application and when it comes to deploying microservices. So uh, you can get there, uh, but what it is is that it does take more work, it does take more effort and there are more things that you need to be aware of more things that you need to think about when you do microservices. With the monolith, it's relatively easier. Uh, you know, it's, you're going to end up with 
one artifact or one executable. You take it, send it to the server, you know, you're going to have to probably set up a, some sort of development, uh, deployment pipeline, but it's not going to be as hard and as complicated as, as it is when you do microservices. There's a lot more things that you need to think about. Project management all the time, hire good, competent, skilled, trained project managers. One of the most popular uh, ways of developing, uh, de uh, developing software today would be Agile, but there's not only that, of course. Um, so what I'm saying is that no matter what methodology you go for, and you can have, and we could have the same discussions here about uh, development methodologies, there can be probably better or worse methodologies based on your company and what you do, what's the type of product that you do. Some companies still work really well with the, the old waterfall um, methodology. But the point is that have a project manager that is actually able to handle the thing well, that knows the principles behind the methodology that you're doing. Um, for example, when you do agile, uh, stand-ups, meetings, need to be done in a certain way. They're not, uh, they're not a coffee type of chat, they're not a relaxed type of, they, they need to be very structured, they need to be too short, on point. And you can only enforce that if you have a project management manager that actually knows how to do this. Otherwise, it will always be very improvised. Um, so I have someone who's very competent, uh, especially with the methodology that fits your organization.